couple of weeks ago, I did a review on this Atom Stack A7 Pro, and it had some problems, and it kept shutting down, and the laser didn't work right, stuff like that. So the company said they were going to send me um, a new laser board, and I figured I'd take it apart and start playing with it to see if I could find a problem, some of the other problems. And I noticed that uh, a couple of the wheels had bad bearings. And then I was just kind of looking at it. There's my Anort Tor laser, and here's that Atom Stack laser. Um, just kind of trying to compare compare them. This one's a 10-watt laser, and it's got really little skinny heat sinks. I couldn't believe that when you look at it. And then the airflow is all nozzled down onto that one area. But um, I played with those wheels that were on it for a while and tried to get rid of the bumping. Every time they go around, there was like a really bad bump. And it turned out that there were actually bad bearings in a couple of them. And they also were machined poorly. So I had um, dead spots in them that could have been causing problems. So I actually went on Amazon, I ordered a set of real high quality wheels for them to replace all the wheels on it and see if I could solve that problem. And then this was a couple weeks later and Adam Stack sent me the replacement board for the laser. Now this is the laser control board, it goes up on top and I'll be switching these out in these videos and trying it again. Now you can see that's the one that goes on the top and this one looks slightly different, it's got different color connectors. and. You can see this one actually has a conformal coating on it where the other one had no coating. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, replace the wheels. And actually it turned out that all the screws on these wheels were too short. They didn't go into the nylock in the nuts. But anyhow, you can see there's a spacer, a wheel, and then a spacer. Um, so I'm just going to put the new wheel back on. And yeah, this is a real simple job. And the, um, the wheels that are on there, when I really, you know, took them off and looked at them, they kind of, they didn't look that good. It looked like they were machined with a really dull tool, whatever they did, all kinds of tears and chunks missing out of them. So I guess that might be part of the problem also, but the bearings also have a dead spot in them. And there's the new ones. You can see they look like they're precision ground. So, um, you know, this should make a difference in that bump, bump, bump that could have been causing the, uh, sensor to trip in the laser so um you know the one bottom one there has an eccentric in it so you have to be sure to put that in the same location and the you know make sure it goes back into the hole there and there's the one that came off of there you can see how chewed up it looks see um uh, doesn't look like it's a good quality wheel that they use from the factory but um hopefully these new ones will fix it and then it was time to tear apart this uh, X assembly and put new wheels in there too. And again, um, all the bolts were a little short so that none of the nuts actually went into, or the nylock on the nuts was actually exposed. The bolts didn't go into it. So, you know, that could be a problem over time with uh, screws loosening up. So that came apart and, you know, there you can see it's uh, when you, you tighten them down, the thread's way down in there. It doesn't come out to the nylon, so they're actually not lock nuts when you do that. And there also is a um, eccentric on that one, and you have to make sure that there's a big clearance hole there on that one. And it should really have a washer on there, but not long, a long enough screw to put one in there. Because when you tighten that, it tries to shift in the hole and um, set it back off center. So I got all those um, wheels replaced now, and... What a difference. This thing sm slides really super smooth. No dead spots, no flat spots or anything else. So that definitely could have been the um, problem, you know, what was tripping the movement in it constantly. So if you have the, you know, the laser shutting down, um, I would say uh, pull all your belts off and check everything. Because that's the only way you can tell how smooth they are. So I got everything, uh, I'm, I'm adjusted nice and snug now too. I don't have to leave them loose anymore. I was able to tighten the belts right up and it worked good. I'll show you in a little while. And then I'll put that X back in there. And I got everything back together, moving really nice and smooth. The belts aren't in place yet, but you know, I'll work on that next. 
The motor is making a little bit of a grinding noise too on that, so there may be something with a bearing in the motor too, but you know, for now I'm not going to mess with that. So then it's time to replace the board on the laser. And if you watch the other video, you saw after about an hour's worth of use, it went from a, you know, nice engraving and cutting to a um, kind of like a different color, smoky look cut, and I couldn't really get a clean cut in anything. So it's pretty simple. Uh, you take out the four corner screws, and when I started, I had no idea how long they were. They go way down into the laser. And uh, take that cover off. There's uh, two layers of plastic spacers. And then you have to unplug the connector. There's a connector to the laser and one to a fan. I had to use needle nose because my fingers wouldn't fit in there. They're too, too big to fit in there. Uh, the laser connector and then the fan actually comes out. And there's, you know, some more spacers in there. And that's how the board comes out. It almost looks like the same board they use on the Ortor lasers also when I compared it. And there you can see this old board had no coating or anything on it. The new one's a much higher quality looking with a nice conformal coating on it. So I'm not sure. Sometimes, you know, when you get these first piece prototypes, you might get something that's not a real production item. But they look the same, different color connectors on there and stuff. But um, basically, I, I probably just a different EC level or something. So now it's time to put that back together. But let's take a quick look in there first. Um, see if we get the fan out. And there's the fan. That's a cooling fan for the heat sink. It blows down through it. And you can see, as I said before, there's very little aluminum around this for a 10 watt for heat sinking it compared to the, you know, like the smaller 5 watt laser. So not sure how they um, make these things survive, but they do. So that's what the laser looks like inside there. And um, you can't really get that other part out at this time. Then I found the easiest way to get it back together was to kind of assemble all these parts upside down on the bench, uh, get all the spacers in place and stuff. And just make sure the um, hole in the plastic cover is lined up with the connector location. And then that goes on the Slide through the fan so you can see these screws actually hold everything together. And um, I couldn't figure out any way to do it right side up. Last, get the last screw and a couple spacers in there, and you know, then it's all ready to go in place. You have to make sure that that one connector is pointed in the, to the back of it for the laser wires and. Just slide it up in there and you're ready to go. So that, you know, that was an easy fix and uh, hopefully it'll work out. Let's get that connector back in there. And we're ready to go again, ready to try it out. Now, one thing I noticed is that that screw in there was putting some pretty good gouges in that plate for the, you know, the short amount of time I used it. So I had some 20,000 thick UHMW I figured I'd put on there that's soft enough that you can, um, the screw will go into it without gouging anything. And it's tough enough, it'll withstand it. And it locks against the front rails on that guide, so it shouldn't bother it. Now I'm going to put this over in my um, Ortor enclosure that I built. Uh, it's a tight fit, but can't run these things in, you know, inside without some kind of smoke control. And I grabbed a uh, picture that my wife uh, has actually a printout of a picture that she found online. And I figured I'm going to make her a nice uh, copy of it engraved with a frame on it. So here it is, um, you know, basically starting it up after it. 
it didn't work and it looks like it's working great again um, so no problems anymore uh, that you can see lasers back to the right color and everything's working no no real bit smoky cuts or anything it is doing an excellent job on the picture I feel now this is on a piece of um, hard maple plywood that I'm trying this time so this ran, I set it up and it ran about two hours, no problems at all, no shutdown or anything. So definitely it was a combination of those two things uh, messing it up. And there it is. I feel it really came out nice, you know, after, after all that. So um, what a difference it makes now that it's fixed. And then we're going to just do some cutting to, to show you how it cuts. Um, and there it is. I got a clean cut with no smoke and no burning. Um, that's one point five millimeters there and then let's see this was a three millimeter piece and I'm cutting here and one pass around and no problems whatsoever there either and I just couldn't do that before the way it was actually 2.8 millimeters and let's do another another piece of plywood this was um i think this was the three millimeter let's see i wrote it on it i did one test cut before running it to see if it would work and that one went through with one cut too actually that's the uh five millimeter maple no actually this is the five millimeter maple that was the um four millimeter birch and here's a piece of five millimeter maple, hard maple plywood that I'm cutting. And I'm going to do two passes on this one. Because it is a, a little bit harder um, wood than the other ones. And you can see I'm getting a nice clean cut again. And uh, it looks to be working nice. So um, it definitely was uh, that laser board that blew or something after about an hour. And this did fix it. So, you know, it looks much better today than uh, the other day. And that, uh, I could have done one more pass. It was a little bit tight, but there it is. That's a 5 millimeter hard maple plywood. So, it is a uh, cutting equivalent to the, um, the D1 there. And then I decided to uh, try some 12 millimeter plywood and I let that run a, a couple times around and let's see where is it I really couldn't get through that no matter how many times I went around it, it just started burning worse so I can't do 12 millimeter plywood then I tried a piece of that 14 millimeter poplar that I've been you know using for demos too and this I did uh, 10 passes on it didn't quite get through it but um, I was able to uh, just tap it with a screwdriver handle and it popped right out. So one more pass I figured might get through it. And you can see it's really kind of smoky, but it did it. So I ran it with a couple more passes and it really surprised me because I came out with the exact same results. Um, it, it almost cut it, but it didn't quite cut it. Uh, it seems as if it's at the limit of the laser. And now I'm going to show you, I, try, I decided to try the offline controller, and I put a file, I saved a file on the SD microcard that comes with it, and actually plugged it in the top of the controller, the other, um, the control box actually on the machine. And here you can see this little uh, tablet here that comes with it, lets you uh, do all your framing and, you know, moving around and set up while you're, you're working with it. You can't really see what's being done, but you do have full control over you know getting it set up locating it framing it and you have control over your power levels and stuff and you can start running it from there as you can see and then it has a um, a little graph there that kind of tells you how much percent is done and then the laser, you know, it seemed to be good as long as you set everything up in light burn and there you can watch, you know, complete. 
And this was one of the files that was included as a test file on the SD card. So all I did is I brought into Lightburn and then I did a um, save as G code and I saved it on the micro SD card, you know, with all the settings on it, plugged it in the machine and here we are running it. So that offline function does work 100% I'm seeing and it does do a good job. And there we are, you can see it's at 70% now. And then it's complete. Print's done. And you can put several different files on the card. So if you do things over and over again, that would be a great way to, you know, not have to have a computer hooked up to this. Oops, and trying to get in my enclosure there. A little bit tight, but um, there's one of the test file they sent, and it did come out perfect. So, you know, it looks like it's working now. Um, and then I decided to just uh, run one more of the test files, and I ran it a little bit light, you can see. I should have gone a little darker with the setting, but um, it did a real good job with the shading, and that's on the hard maple plywood again. So after a couple hours of running, um, everything's still nice and tight, smooth, no bumps or anything yet. So it looks like, um, you know, this is how I fixed it, and I'm going to tell you, if you have problems with it shutting down, a good idea to take it apart and start by checking the wheels because um, I think that took all the bump out of it you know and uh, helped it continue on so you can see it does actually do a nice job now and um, you know it's kind of comparable to all the other lasers but it's at a little bit lower price thanks for watching please subscribe